Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Ariella Indigo and I'm your host for the Multidimensional Human Experience Global Summit. Now, they say that somebody's purpose is often born out of their pain and this Global Summit is a good example of that because for many years, in fact, until my mid-30s, I experienced a lot of challenges and confusion largely due to being a highly sensitive person and not understanding that a lot of the so-called weird stuff going on with me was due to my multidimensional nature and having access to other realities beyond 3D. A major shift occurred in my life about two and a half years ago now when I experienced an unexpected activation which changed the way that I understand reality forever. I remembered my galactic nature and in fact, in fact, I met two of them when I woke up one morning and they were stood in my bedroom. So since then, I felt passionately drawn to raising awareness about other realities of existence and to find ways to help fellow sensitives so that they can push past their challenges and align with their missions. So in today's interview, I'm so excited to be joined by Lisa Transcendence Brown. He's done a huge amount of service work in the multidimensional arena and whose work I so respect and admire. If you haven't come across Lisa yet, then you're in for a real treat. as She's got an incredible gift for sharing knowledge and wisdom. <laughs> so Lisa's globally recognized as an author, a transformational speaker, a way shower and teacher for New Earth assisting others in the awakening process and empowering people to live mastery from within. As an embodied ascended master and ancient key code holder for new earth, Lisa brings forth higher consciousness wisdom and knowledge to empower all who are ready to embrace their own quantum existence. So Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the summit. It's thank such you. an honour to have you here. It, it really is. And, and thank you so much for being such a huge catalyst and supporting my own multidimensional awakening. Um, thank it's you. It's been a great support to me. And um, I'd love to start off, if, if we can, Lisa, just by asking you to, to please tell us a bit about your story, your journey and um what you feel your what is your passion and, and your mission all about today loaded questions you know how they go we'll be here forever <laughs> <laughs> one question forty thousand answers <laughs> um okay so first question i'm non-linear which means it's, it's all it, it appears to be all over the place but we're basically pulling in all the information for everything and tying it in together so while to the human it feels we're all over the place we're not <laughs> quantum is there's no linear anything here but we are going to get a lot of information for sure <laughs> we just shove it all into one space if we go linear we'd never get it all included so basically we bounce all over the place and bring it all in we're going most um, dimensional that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's about. Nobody else anymore. <laughs> so it's a whole way of existence. It's very different than it was before. Um, okay, so my journey story. Um, full blown, I, I was a walk in. Um, the body was three. I remember the day I walked in, how profound and devastating and, and messed up it all was, <laughs> as if it was yesterday or right now. Um, it was being on a planet that you know you're not supposed to be on and, and how you got here. And, and so my thing, though, was I didn't understand. Um, I just knew that things were messed up and off and that I wasn't supposed to be here. It, that was my perception at the time. Right. Um, I chose the extreme as far as unconscious, deeply embedded within the Matrix program deeply asleep, full-blown amnesia, had no clue other than not wanting to be here. I never wanted to be here. I wanted to, I wanted to go back to whatever planet I was from, but in I had dual things going on 
which meant that I was also full blown human too. And so because I chose the extreme, then I chose a lot of suffering, a lot of dramatic, a lot of, uh, of what other people would call horrible. It doesn't really matter because once you clear all of that stuff, it doesn't even matter anymore. It's an old illusion that never even occurred. You have an awareness and, and you start understanding the whole reason you have those experiences so that you could turn around and assist everybody else with what they're going through because it brings through the compassion and the letting go of the judgment about it all. So I chose every extreme um, in order to clear this also was my first incarnation right which meant I chose to experience everything in this existence here which meant I had to do it in an extremely extreme way because I was fully unconscious I, I didn't have a clue so forego that deeply embedded in the program everything left brain linear logical um, in the younger days, it was all art and, and, and the, the things that, that we do as free spirits and all that kind of stuff. But, but then when, when it's time to basically enter into leaving some of that stuff, then it was um, everything logical and, and to the extreme. And so it was com uh, computers and, and um, law enforcement, legal, running companies, corporate America, uh, just deeply... Uh, computer programming, building computers from scratch. So I had, a, I had this intelligence that went beyond what I had learned, but I had to do everything, which really came into a great play later because you have to do this in order to understand it. You, you can't just sit around regurgitating the old words of what multidimensionality is like. Otherwise, it's an intellectual, intellectual thing. Yeah. Which is what a lot of us do for a while when we're gathering all the information. You're gathering data. You're, you're filling your consciousness, uh, your field, with all that information basically to wake yourself up and, and, and dissolve the veils of amnesia, which, which are held inside our physical body. And so I went from that extreme to my universe was basically, I did not know that I was a gatekeeper and a grid keeper and all of these things and a way shower. Um, I, I know I kept having flashes of things, but I just discounted them all. They, they didn't seem real or believable and they were kind of crazy when I saw that I was going to be leading the world through multidimensionality. And little old Lisa had, you had this little human that's like, how am I supposed to do anything? I'm a nobody. And, and so you have this, I'm a nobody, nobody's going to listen to me. But then you're going through all these experiences that, that, that nobody else has a clue of what's going on. And then it's time to get yourself out there. It's time to start speaking the crazy stuff. It's time to start sharing the information. Um, I'm going to back up for one moment only because being a gatekeeper and a grid keeper for 2012 meant that I had to go from basically fully unconscious and unconscious means our hearts closed. We have walls of protection up. We live in survival mode and, and, and all these protection mechanisms. And for me, I had survived everything, which meant I was tougher than everybody else and I couldn't be broken. Well, to be a survivor means that I got to be broken harder <laughs> because you can't break us that, which means that we got to be broken down even worse if we're going to keep kicking and screaming and, and trying to be a survivor. And I was one of those. Um, you don't break a survivor. We've survived everything. You're not going to get through these walls of steel. You're not going to get to my heart. I'm not going to be vulnerable because that means I'm weak. And so I had all these programs I had to clear. And, and so because I didn't want to wake up unconsciously and I kept kicking and screaming and fighting all of this, then basically my universe, which is me, and I understand all of this, we don't have an outside higher self anymore. We don't have an outside universe other than I talk to my universe 24 hours a day. I gotta have somebody to talk to. Hey universe, because I tell me I'm ready for this, I'm ready for that. Okay, universe, bring universe, why would I have to you know, you you having these crazy conversations <laughs> with your universe going, because you gotta get an answer back. Um but when it was time for me to wake up to start fulfilling my purposes and roles here and my missions, then basically my human, your, your human doesn't get a choice anymore because the human will never choose to wake up. <laughs> Let's face it. Um, we don't like our world changing. We don't like 
when, when, when we don't have control. We don't like to have to give this up for that or anything. And we don't like moving into the unknown. It, it's scary. And so basically moving into a higher dimensional reality means you're going to walk into the unknown a lot of the time, but inside, you know, and, and all the trust and the faith that we didn't have before because we lived in survival and safety mechanism modes, all of those walls of steel, all of those protection mechanisms have to come down. And for me, because I was so strong and fighting my universe, basically, I say this from one perspective, but in another perspective, it's not true. But to explain all of them, we'd be here forever. So I'm having to pick one to go with here. Basically, when it was time for me to wake up on, on a soul level, on a galactic level, on a higher self level, then my human didn't get have a choice to stay unconscious anymore. So me, as my universe said, okay, Lisa, um, let's do it for you. Because this is how it works in, in one capacity, but then it's a very different truth if you look at it from another way. But it was time for me to wake up and my human didn't get to stay unconscious anymore. And what meant my heart had to open. When your heart first starts to open, all your stuff's coming up. Well, that's the stuff we feared. That's the stuff we've suppressed. That's the stuff we haven't wanted to look at. That's all the stuff. And so we, we try really hard to keep just pushing it back in. And the body, when, when, with the ascension of earth, physical body ascension, means that you've got to bring your body through with you. You've got to bring your body through with you. You don't get to leave. And you, you, for a while, you get to float around, and it's awesome. But the body's got to come, too. And the body doesn't hold the vibration to walk in multiple dimensions. It's got too much physical density. It's got too many old programs. It's got all this stuff that was suppressed inside. It doesn't operate at a vibrational frequency that allows you to physically expand into multiple dimensions and experience them here. So while most people think that 3D it is the physical and 4D is the and 5D is this, then, then once you've actually experienced this, you start to realize there, there's a 3D, 4D, 5D, but they're all different physical realities. They're not an etheric one anymore. So while a lot of the mentality is that the higher dimensions are etheric, when you become etheric, they're very physical. Right. Interesting. When you embody your soul, then you, you change dimensions literally in timelines. And you start experiencing these other dimensions in your physical world. You leave the old timelines behind. You leave the old dimensions behind. And, and, and you are aware that those who, who still live in those dimensions still live in those dimensions or those timelines or those vibrations or whatever, because they're all different words we use. But basically, you respect the reality they live in. But you go on and you live in your awesome reality and, and, and you let it go because... The realities in each dimension are very different. And did, that happen? Ahead, did, did that happen? Sorry, just to just to quickly interrupt because I'm interested and I think the viewers would be interested to hear. Did yeah. that physical ascension process happen, you know, in a in a blink of an in a, in a blink of a human eye, or was it a process for you? It's a process. That, that, that continues as we intentionally start to shift our vibrational frequency ourselves. Okay. So it means intentional participation, which in the beginning when we're unconscious, we're not intentionally participating in this because it's too weird and crazy. And, and it messes with our world. Yeah. Um, our human will be going, this is an inconvenience. Don't mess with my world. I want this job. I want this house. I want this relationship. And there's all these attachments and expectations of how we thought our life was going to go. Well, when your life, we have human aligned realities and we have soul aligned realities. Well, they're very different because a soul re aligned reality is going to be very different than your human aligned one. Your human aligned reality is going to be the things your human wants. On a soul level, you're here to, to fulfill, it's called soul purposes because each one, we have all these different aspects. Mm -hmm. And as we become these aspects, this isn't a walking around, I am this, I am that. This, this is a being in, in, in how you live your life. This is an entire completely different existence of the embodiment of higher light consciousness. And as you embody this higher light consciousness, your whole reality changes. It's supposed to. You're not supposed to live in lack anymore. You're not supposed to live in greed. You're not supposed to live in all of these limits and all these realities of constructs and old beliefs. Um, and, and so all of those things are challenged. So it is, it, it's a, this is a continual process of different phases. It's, a, it's many processes within processes. 
It, it's initiations, it's gateways that we go through. And it's a continual process that never ends, but we continue to go higher and higher and higher and expand further across more dimensions and galaxies. And from amazing. within. So amazing. So from a, from a, on a very sort of linear human level, how could you describe it so that intellectually <laughs> that's about <laughs> the best i can you know myself and many watching will be able to do right now you know that's the reality how can give us some words so that we can start to try and grasp where we've we've seen your journey where you've come from and the process how would you describe where you're at now in a way that we might understand um years of dedication to vibrational frequency existences and, and moving out of my head to live in my heart and, and i'm going to explain this through a process because there is no there's no simple answers to anything they're they're all sure huge. this is a massive <laughs> quest. i appreciate that. <laughs> and we've only got 55 minutes I know. <laughs> I know. We've already decided this is going to be rough, trying to get it all in here. And it takes a lot of words to describe a process that's very simple because our human can't grasp the concept. So basically, we have to use words to paint a picture. We have to use yeah. words to basically, that's why everything I say is light encoded because it speaks to those other dimensional aspects of you that already get this. And basically, it just activates your knowledge, which is why it's so important that us that that we all share the information and the knowledge of the higher dimensions that we come to understand through our own experiences here is because one it gives it um it, it makes it a, a legitimate and real palpable thing instead of something we all run around talking about all day long to experience it yeah it ha it requires experience to understand this and but our human doesn't like these experiences because they're weird and they're unsettling because um when you expand into the other dimensions and i'm going to go back and i'll explain that in a moment mm -hmm. um, mine was years for me i had to because i had to move so fast and, and expedite everything mm -hmm. going from fully unconscious to full consciousness in a matter of about a year and a half i didn't have much time and i had to go through intense 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 extremes uh, of losing my ever loving mind um you kind of have to lose your mind for your heart to open because I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And your mind doesn't that's get to a really, run the show. That's a really good point. Yeah. And so basically, when I entered, and it's called Dark Night of the Soul, but technically the soul's not dark. And technically there is no darkness. But at the time, we don't understand that. Yeah. And so the dark equates to dark and light are a battle of duality that we go through inside. And once we move fully into the light, if you will, there's no more dark anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to let the battle of the dark and the light go, or you're always going to be battling something out there. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be looking at yourself as, as, as less and something wrong with yourself. And, and it's more important to understand this. You're either conscious or you're not. You're either awake or you're asleep. You're, you're, if you want a polarity, then describe something that actually describes the entire reality as it is instead of a battling thing. Mm -hmm. This isn't a battle anymore, except inside of each person here. And, and so basically, um, my universe, basically I had to go through the depths. When we start to wake up to consciousness and our heart starts to open, then all our human programming starts to come up which is the heavy duty emotions, which is the, 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 the strong beliefs and mentalities and thoughts that basically that's the old matrix program that played out in our physical reality world. And, and so basically when all those constructs are, are ready to be dismantled and, and ready to be um, basically your realities are about to be built from a whole new platform, a whole new foundation, which is love and purity and integrity and honor deeply from within. It's a very sacred experience. Um, when your soul is awakens inside of your body, then the whole world stops making sense. But then it's a process of learning to pay, to understand which part of you you're being. Are you being a pure soul in that moment? Are you coming from integrity and love and respect? 
or have you separated off into your little human plane in the old games again? Mm. And it's a process of learning which aspect you're being. Mm. Are you being your higher self? Is this about the bigger picture? Is, is this what you're contributing or what you're taking? Is this about you or is it for everybody here? And, and so basically when, when your soul awakens in your body, then you split off into two people. You have human and you have a higher self and you have the battle that starts inside. In the third dimension, and I do break them down just for an understanding, but not a fixed mentality thing. In the third dimension, when we were unconscious, basically each dimension is a consciousness and an experience. Right. It's not a, it's not the third dimension is the physical reality anymore. That's the old way. Before we came through the 2012 gateway, when nobody had access before. Once we came through the 2012 gateway, and my role was as a way shower, as an awakener, as a, as a catalyst, as a, all of these words, as, as a multidimensional, um, to share the knowledge as I went through it. So basically my universe said, shut your whole world out, Lisa, you're about to learn from us. And I had all these galactic beings, I had all of these, you know, because out, at, in the beginning it's outside. Yes. And it's in our dream state. And, and, and so basically I had to learn to surrender my human to my higher self, which is a hard thing to do. I had to learn to surrender my human and let my universe run the show. And as humans who are in survival mode, in, in fear, in I'm not going to give my power away, I've got to control everything, we don't give our power away to anything. Mm -hmm. But the difference is we gave it away to the whole outside world. And now it's time to take it back. And in order to bring your power back inside, you have to listen to something and it's going to be your highest aspect of you. It's going to be, but what's going to happen is it's going to challenge everything your human wants and what you perceive as real and what you perceive as easy is going to become hard because all those emotions that we, we suppressed, all of those things, all, all those programs we were operating under, they're all about to become visible. And, and as a human, we judge it all. Mm. As a higher self, we see it all. And we realize that's just an old program. Oh, it's not even true anymore. Oh, that, that was an old program. And so basically it means choosing which aspect you're going to be. Are you going to be your higher self and do what's right every time from inside and from love, honor, respect, and integrity and all of these, these things that are required in order to leave the old existence behind? Or are you going to go small and shrink down into a little human and get greedy and selfish and think about yourself and, and it's all about you and, and you forget about the whole bigger picture going on? One suffers, one has it easy. Mm -hmm. So it's that embodiment embodying that that higher self that higher it consciousness all of them it's not just one in the beginning it's just one <laughs> right. that's 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 where it gets weird because when you have many higher selves then i used to call it the bipolar effect because yeah. at first it's just up down when before physical body ascension then you're you have a high and a low high low high up down up down up down but as we work through those highs and lows, you don't, and you maintain balance inside, you don't have the highs and the lows. Um, all of a sudden, it becomes expansion and contraction, feeling compressed, feeling squished. And, and multidimensionality, once we go through physical body ascension, there's no more highs or lows anymore. It's awesome. Right. We also don't need to show an emotion to be felt. It's through an electromagnetic magnetic field of energy. We transmit energy out. So basically, we can look emo emotionless and be laughing our ass off inside. <laughs> we can look totally awesome and be crying inside. But the difference is we're just clearing energy. We're just clearing a program. It doesn't dominate our world, and it doesn't last long, and we don't need to express it unless it needs to be expressed because we have to align our physical realities in alignment with our highest truth. We have to align our physical realities in alignment with, with basically our soul codes and sequences. And we have galactic missions and we have soul purposes and then we have human roles. And as we merge all of these aspects, because within, so, so a galactic has a billion different aspects. 
you've got um, Syrian, Pleiadian, Lyran, Lyran. You've, you've got um, Arcturian. And each one of these have a different vibrational frequency and energy that comes through. And when they activate inside your body, they flood your whole body and your cells with the energy and the consciousness of this aspect. Your whole world's about to change. All of your awarenesses, uh, everything is, is about to start to come forth. But as a multidimensional, we function, and this is key, in every dimension simultaneously, and the physical one is a response. Right. Mm. The physical one is a manifestation, which is a human's word. For us, it's a materialization because you're, you actually shape physical matter into form which means that you're fully conscious of everything that you are creating and you, you never transmit anything out that isn't going to create a reality that's awesome. Right. <laughs> but the human is unconscious and doesn't have this capability yet because they're still transmitting all of these different frequencies of confusion and I can't choose and it's not important to me and I don't value this and this is more important and, and, and all of these things. And so basically when you're transmitting a billion different confusing fr frequencies, then that's what you're experiencing in your world. When, when you transmit the highest frequency possible, then that's what you're going to receive. Sorry, I'm going to stop for a moment. I know I went sideways on this, but you know me. No, it's, it's, it's great. It's, um, you know, we, we, we could talk for hours. I, I wish we could. Um, 55 minutes is nowhere near <laughs> enough to cover such a huge topic. And um, I teach, you know, somebody who has experienced so much. So I really appreciate. But, we, you know, let's, let's keep trying, right? Let's <laughs> we'll keep going. going. <laughs> Star Next week. Star <laughs> Star <laughs> I want yeah, to start star seeds, star seeds a bit yeah. because I know there's going to be a lot of star seeds who are who are tuning yeah. into this, and you know, um, I count myself as a as a star seed. That was very much part of my awakening, and yeah. I know that you have, um, yeah, you you have gone through a similar process. I I appreciate that is no longer a label that you would use to call yourself. But it would be really cool to know, for me to know, and for other star seeds watching, what is that sort of star seed process from your point of view of being further down the line? That star seed or multidimensional star seed experience. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shift for a moment, and then I'm gonna come back to that. We have our human, which has a gazillion different aspects. We've got the manipulator, we've got, we've got the control freak, we've got all of those. So we look at all the human characteristics and traits. And then you have the soul body, which has a billion different aspects as well, which is all of yourselves, higher, lower, all of these things that we purify and cleanse. And one of those is galactic, okay? Now, in one capacity, galactic is the biggest one. But when we basically in, reach avatar consciousness, basically which is oversoul embodiment then then it's basically a lot of people call it the monad yes once once you merge all of the hum, the human and and the soul and the galactic all into one form which is inside of us then then basically we have we have the star seed when it starts to wake up realizes it's on it's it, it doesn't want to be on this planet it doesn't want to be in this body it wants to leave please ships come pick me up get me out of here i want to go back to my planet get me off this ride and as star seeds we don't want to be here technically we 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 actually lack respect we actually because we don't respect any of this it's all messed up and it doesn't come from purity and it doesn't come respect and it doesn't come from love. And we look at all the humans walking around and I heard it the other day and I had to laugh because we all go through this. We don't like humans. <laughs> we get to the point, our words are, I hate humans. And because as a star seed, you don't see yourself as a human. Not, not really. Now, star seeds are awesome because they're the ones that, that are the system busters. They're the ones that are not going to fit into that system no matter what you do. You're not going to force them into that system, and they're going to bring the system down. They don't care. Starseeds love to play. Starseeds love the fun. 
the only thing is star seeds don't like responsibility <laughs> <laughs> no really <laughs> there is a birthing process and, and so when I speak to each process I'm speaking to all of those processes not just the star seed when I'm speaking on a soul level I'm speaking on a human one when new birth when new birth <laughs> when new birth <laughs> they're the same thing <laughs> wow this is uh yeah <laughs> this could be a great show a revelation <laughs> coming from Lisa Transcendence Brown <laughs> When we start to awaken to a new earth existence, it first starts to come forth in our dreams. Usually, or in the waking state, we'll have a weird experience that'll usually trigger a fear or something going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, for, for me, the path I chose was, um, and a lot of people are still in this place too, because it's really important. And we can't negate what people are going through because it's a very important part of their process. There are just explanations that explain what that part of the process is, which is what I do. It's not to say what you're going through isn't real. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're in it, it's not only is it real, it's beyond real. Yeah. It's intense, yeah. it's tough. And so, but it is a vibrational dimension and a timeline that you're in. It's not the only one. Mm -hmm. And that's what multidimensionality does is it brings in that there are a billion and gazillion other realities that are also true. And the more that you can see, the more you realize they're all true. The moment I realized that everything was true, Right now, we've got an influx of people running around. This is true. This isn't true. This is, this is, this, my truth is true and your truth isn't true. And, and there's this whole battle of truth going on right now because they're moving out of their head. Mm -hmm. starting, and when you move out of your head, your reality is what was true before isn't true anymore. When you move into your heart, it's the opposite of what you thought it was. Because we live in a world of opposites when you move from human to soul. Well, galactics have their own truth. They love to play. They want to connect with their star family. We just want to hook up. We know we're here for a bigger purpose, but it's the beginning of the birth, if you will. And a lot yeah. gets stuck in this phase, right? It's yeah, like an over-identification. The word. The, the word stuck, and part of this is equating the words we use. Mm -hmm. Stuck is a judgment. They're not stuck in anything. They're, they're burning all of the energy of those old programs off until when they get done, they won't be stuck in it anymore. Mm -hmm. Technically, they're, they're in their timeline. The, the, the key thing for this is to understand that what we resonate and what, what we don't, what we believe and what we don't, what we experience and what we don't is going to be based upon our current belief system, yeah. the vibrations that we hold, how expanded we've been able to become, in order to see multiple dimensions to realize how different they all are how much we embody to actually respect somebody else that's living in a different timeline and reality completely and a different universe because once you expand beyond just the universe and into the galaxies all of those realities change then you're in multiverses and, and different earths i mean hitting earth to new earth and then earth three and all these other earths opening up humans are still believing they live on one earth mm -hmm. And, and, but I know I'm all over the place. <laughs> no, it's, it's awesome. I've got a question in a minute, but please. Well, you might forget, say it and then I'll come back around because I got to go back around to what you asked a minute ago. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I'm hearing is that you are saying from a star seeds perspective, yes, um, we're the system busters and we have our, we have mich our missions are all around like a system buster right yeah but what i'm also hearing is that there is soul work for us to do while we're here so from a soul evolution perspective i don't know if you would use these words evolution is perfect but, we, but we have yeah we have there are reasons there are things that we've come here to learn about to take responsibility for and that is also part of our overall that is our overall purpose which is yes. a different vibration to the mission being the system busting thing to also take responsibility and work on our sole purpose while we're here. It's important to understand that being a star seed is, whoa, frequency just screamed. Hold on. We're about to go really high. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. So that's the first announcement. Get ready. Cause that was deafening and we're about to get jacked up. 
So gravity will go for some people. Your head will get all bobbly. Get all ready. Here we go. Okay, cool. It's been powerful. Okay. okay. Star seeds haven't done the deep, intense, heavy duty inner work usually. Well, that's, that's, I will say I got to separate it to make it make sense, but it's not really true because technically we're always doing all of these things. It's just, we kind of move in between the different processes and phases depending on where we need to be at that time. So let's say you've got somebody stuck in the conspiracy stuff, blaming the outside world about being oppressed and all that stuff. That just means they're carrying a lot of that old karmic energy. They're carrying a lot of that old programming inside their body and they don't understand when you say that this happened or that this is what's going on. Everything is to bring everybody fully into their, empower them from inside. Well, we don't stand in power when we first wake up. We stand in complete lack. We stand in lack of everything. Part of the process is moving fully back into power from inside and not letting the outside world dictate your actions anymore not letting the outside dictate. And so when you look at that outside world, if it's corrupt, you got to go inside. Because when, when you're no longer carrying those vibrations, well, that's a hard thing for our human or, or any of us to understand is, oh my goodness, it's inside of me. There's something inside of me that, that's not pure. There's something inside of me because all this judgment and stuff comes up. Yes. We kind of get over the judgment of all of it. Um, Every role is important here because it's all a part of how the whole picture works. And so when, when we enter into human separation, we start judging everybody else for the part of the process they're in or how they're stuck there or they're doing this. And that's not what this is about. This is about everybody coming together and unifying and deciding that that isn't the world we want to live in anymore. That isn't the world that I'm here to create and re realizing that we all have the power of creation from within. And that's where the soul comes in. Okay. Is because when you move into the depths of your soul and you got to look at your own humanness, when you move into the depths of your soul, you basically everything that isn't pure, it's coming up. That's called cellular cleansings, but you're going to watch it play out in your physical world until you've gone inside and, and, and cleared that energy all of those programs, all of those mentalities, all those beliefs, all that victim stuff that you got going on, blaming the whole world out there, all the stuff you're holding on to, all the attachments and cords, all that stuff, it's got to go. How do people do that, Lisa? Do you have any advice around the best way through There is never you know the best way. Up. You know I'm going to correct every word. How about all of the best ways? There's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. um, flood your reality with all things higher conscious. It doesn't matter what it is. You just have to, it's just gotta be that important. Dedicate yourself to your highest existence here. And, and, and now I'm gonna say, don't do this, do this. And it's just to get a point across because we're always gonna do these things until we're done with it, okay? Mm -hmm. Dedicate yourself to your highest existence here and whatever it takes, you're gonna do it. Because our human doesn't like to do the work. Our human doesn't like challenge. Our human doesn't want to do what's hard. Our human doesn't want to, to go through those feelings. And it is physically painful when we start releasing the density from our physical body. And so humans, we will avoid the pain. We will do everything. We don't want the emotional pain. We don't want the mental anguish. We don't want to feel all that stuff that starts coming up. Well, nobody can exist on earth anymore because earth has ascended. Okay, which means that every person on earth, everything they got's coming up. That's kind of the point. All those programs cannot continue to play out. Those realities, and I'm going to use the words, will collapse because they will, or you can dissolve them yourself. There is a matrix. Each person, I'm going to flip it for one second and come back around to what you asked. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own matrix system in their field of consciousness and in their physical body. And so basically you have a stargate system and it carries you to the other dimensions and, and all this kind of stuff, which is really cool. You get to live in these other dimensions as your reality and then dictate what your physical reality, which one you want. Now the part of your human will never know what's coming, but it will always know inside when you're connected deeply inside of you, then you always know it's going to be awesome. It's going to be something you've been waiting for. It's going to be something that you really, really, really want. Only the human will create a story or a scenario 
uh, and go back into the dread and the gloom and doom because there's still that programming inside of the body that's got to go. So when you ask me what to do, it's going to be everything that you can. It doesn't matter what you do. Read every freaking book. Watch every video. And this is where the human gets into an issue. It doesn't want to spend money on its soul. My house thing. It's, yeah. Okay. It's interesting. There are many things that are built into higher consciousness and, and, and awareness of our lower consciousness aspects of us. One, our soul isn't worth our money. Our money comes first. Well, every person that believes that or functions from that place will be taken to that point of choosing money or soul. Mm -hmm. Every time you choose your soul, you're going to spend your money. Every one of us had to do this too. You cannot get to new earth if it's not important to you. You just can't. If your soul is always going to be the last thing you choose and your money is going to come first, then you're going to stay stuck on old earth until you got no money. And then your soul will be the only thing you got. And then when your soul is all you got, all of a sudden it's going to be the most important thing you have. And you're going to start from scratch and you're going to rebuild everything doing without, which is what a lot of us chose was to, to be taken to that place because our soul was not important yet. This is a completely different rebuilding of an entire value system where your soul and your journey and your purposes and your missions, and this is key, are the most important thing to you and everything else supports that. Well, I really relate to that. As you know, Lisa, you know, here I am broadcasting from my caravan in Glastonbury after going through a massive transition where I came from a, you know, a very um, materially based reality. Yep. So I, we I all understand. Yeah. I had to go through it too. Now, the reason I say this is because when we place our importance on things over each other, when we place our importance on money over our soul, when we place our importance on something else matters more. One of the things that I had to learn, and it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I have to equate the words. Learning is an experience to teach us what not to do anymore. <laughs> When we get tired of having that experience, we've learned our lesson. Lesson is just teaching us as a human on a higher dimensional plane of existence as a higher self, as the universe, all of these things. You already know these things, but you weren't willing to listen or do what it took before. So you required a billion different experiences to bring all that resistance and that fight and that stubbornness down because that's what this is about. As long as you're insistent that your reality is going to be your way, I used to say it's like Burger King, you don't get it your way or whatever the words are. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how this, your human doesn't get to run the show anymore. Yeah. But it will kick and scream because one, it doesn't appreciate things. The human is never happy. It never has enough. It always wants more. So basically we get stripped down to nothing if that's the path we chose so that we understand we appreciate everything we've got and, and and for some of us it took us going to absolutely nothing to appreciate nothing and when we yeah. i get and it when we got yeah. That fight, yeah we did didn't we it's because entitlement isn't it it's stripping out entitlement which is big for us humans well there's there is a huge especially with galactics there's a huge entitlement that, yeah. that comes through and so you will see that there are different energies and traits and characteristic traits to each one. On a soul level, physical things do not matter. We don't care about such things. E even now with me, I don't care about anything in the physical. It doesn't matter. The difference is I understand the purpose of the physical world things in order to, to fulfill my purposes and my missions and, my, and goals and fill my roles here. And I can't live in lack if I'm going to do what I came here to do. And my universe was like, Lisa, get out of your lack mentality. Lisa, you don't live in lack except in your head. Lisa, clear all of the freaking energy. Lisa, spend your money on this because I didn't want to spend my money on this. I didn't want to pay for that course. I didn't want to pay for this and I didn't want to, and it cost too much money. And this was key. There were many things key along the way, but one of them was, was to realize that until I valued my soul, humans don't value their soul. Yeah. And until I valued myself, we don't value ourselves. Part of the reason is because until we are fully fulfilling our purposes and missions here, we're always going to feel like less. Mm -hmm. 
We're never going to feel like we've done enough, been enough, because we're always striving. And that's a part of the soul's um, journey here. And so each part of the journey will basically lend to where somebody is at the time and what they're clearing, because you have to go from each extreme. You have to go from, so those of us who were strong, masculine, stubborn energy survival mode, and we basically had had to go to being stripped of everything so that we would actually one love ourselves, accept ourselves, have appreciation for what we did have because let's face it, we didn't appreciate anything we had. Absolutely. It was important to us because it was a physical thing and we had an identity attached to the physical and what it meant in who we were. Well, well, when it's time for your soul to wake up, those things don't matter anymore. Mm. all of a sudden you're not fulfilled and all of a sudden all of a sudden you want more that that's because your connection with all things again take precedence over everything here and so on a soul level you're deeply connected with everything it, it, it's it's an extremely sacred experience and it takes you to the depths of your core so you have now i'm going to break this down just just for ex, mm, correlation here Solar sun, Solaris, the great central sun. Mm -hmm. That basically is, is, let's say, and it's true, but it's not true because there's a billion other things, but I'm, I'm minimizing here just to explain. That's basically your soul energy, if you will. Okay. Okay. And, and so that's also your inner power. That's also your inner strength. When you become the sun, your solar plexus in your body, you'll clear all the energy from there. It's also raw. God energy. So you get into all of these other things. When you go move into galactic, it equates more to the moon. Right. And, and so the moons do dictate different cycles. And that's when your heart opens. When you're galactic, you don't want to be on this earth. And then you get into the moon and the planets. And it says internet. Okay, internet hung there for a moment. Hopefully with us going higher, we don't get kicked. Okay, yeah. You have, on, on a galactic level, it gets more into the planets and the stars and all of this stuff. But on a soul level, it tends to equate more to the solar sun. Right. Well, you have both of these that you have to do. And so you can't do one and not the other. But for a while, we will do that part of our journey because those that's the cellular part of our body that's activating. So all the heating up on the inside, all of the temperature changes, all of these things with, with the body breaking out and, and, the, and the rashes and, and the pricklies and, and the body doesn't work like it did anymore and the organs going sideways. That's all a part of the DNA upgrades that the body goes through when we start to embody our energy body, our light body, and we become more energetic here. So we function from a place energetically where we're connected to all things as one again. Well, that's a soul. That's the part of your soul. Mm -hmm. But, so let's flip flop for throw it back to galactics. They don't have that deep connection. So, so we lack that con connection with all things. And, and so when our, our soul bit. starts to wake up, it's I mean, okay. No. It's, but yeah, it's right. the high frequencies. But I can, I we're still with you. Please go. Yeah, please carry on. I closed all the windows out too. That helps. So the to understand that there's there's multiple aspects to this journey, and that each aspect has to be done. That, that we basically work through all our humanness, which also equates to Atlantean and reptilian. They're all the same. So what we do is we start tying everything together and what it really means. So, so that's your human. That's called separation within yourself from pure source light. Well, when you become source again, you're going to be very little human. I call it just humanness because you move out of being a human into a fully conscious being and basically you just have some humanness come up from time to time which is just an old program that you're clearing out and it doesn't rule your world anymore and it, and it doesn't rule your life in the beginning there's a lot of sleeping a ridiculous amount of sleeping for the veils in of amnesia to, to start to, to move out for the matrix to start to um, reconstruct itself according to soul encodements and sequences instead of human 
um, ones. And, and so our realities are built on geometric shapes and, and mathematical equations. But in the beginning, we can't see any of these things. And, and so this equates to that. And, and everything is ratios and percentages and the energy that creates. And so we move into the energy that creates and you move into creator role. And, and when you become totally responsible for yourself, so I'm going to go back to star seeds for a moment. As a star seed, we're, we're aware that, that, that we're from the stars. We're aware that we've got these other aspects of ourselves, but there's still a whole part of the journey that's got to be accomplished within us. And then I'm going to flip it back to soul, okay? Mm. As a star seed, for us to grow up, then we move into the rebellious phase. That's where we start fighting against everything and we're debunking the old everything where, you know, I'm not going to fit into that system. And that's basically our, equates to our teenage days as a human. Okay. We didn't listen to anybody. You're not going to tell me how to do anything. Now, the cool part is, is this is part of the way shower energy that causes you to say, well, screw you. I'll do it myself. Because a way shower doesn't sit around waiting for everybody else. A way shower steps up and says, this is what's got to be done. And basically, It'll, it'll get it done whether it's got any help or not. Now, then you're going to shift into, as a way shower on a soul level, you're then going to emanate out these Christed frequencies. You're going to emanate out this energy that, that dissolves that resistance, that dissolves that separation. So, so on a soul level, you're dissolving all of those things you're unifying everybody you're bringing everybody together but as a star seed you're fighting against the system can you see the duality here I can yeah okay now both and it's are necessary. typical it's classic I, I i understand that very well i've been through it you know Me I'm too. <laughs> but the key is to have all of those aspects instead of dominant in just one because if you do then you've got to evolve each one of those aspects from inside of you which is really really important to understand because new earth is unity consciousness it's us together as one it's us supporting each other it's us being considerate it's us being the one that's going to step up and make the difference and not wait for everybody else it's also us not tolerating the old programs in our world so it's a lot of things it's us standing in command now you move from i'm going back to see south bebop okay I'm going back to galactic for a moment just to let you know we've got a, we've only got a couple more minutes left i would you know i would love to hang out with you uh, i know well, we are hanging out for eternity in a different dimension. Okay. But so, um, we've got to about two or three minutes. <laughs> All right. I'm going to complete that one to say. Basically, there's an evolutionary process for embodiment, which is the maturation process on a soul level in each. As a soul, as a higher self, learning coming to live this. So you basically grow up and for star seeds, you're going to grow into that teenage, go through the rebellion. And then you're going to move into a galactic role where you're fully responsible for everything and you're fulfilling missions and purposes. And you're not, you're not getting caught up in the old um, matrix systems of anything anymore. So I just want to say that to, to finish That's that clear. out. That's it's clear. important because yeah. you're actually stepping up to do whatever it takes work-wise to get it done from a place of peace, love, unity, and all of these things. So we have to move through the processes. And for the soul, we, we birth ourselves as a higher self. We learn how to be a higher self. And then all of them. And, and then what happens is, is we merge all those aspects into one. And we can move between them all and be them all simultaneously without ever missing a beat and at, without shrinking down to go human again. All right, so now... That's amazing. I mean, okay. there's some uh, there's some incredible information and insight there for particularly star seeds, and I know there will be many tuning in. And it's been fascinating yeah. for me to hear. So thank you so much. I just it, it's just a shame we haven't got more <laughs> no. time. It's like <laughs> these are massive questions here, but well, it's a lot of information, and it's important for all of us, which is why we share. So, but it's going, you. you know, like you say, this information is going in at a very, it will be going in in a very deep level. And our job is just to create the awareness. Our job is just to say it so that it can be heard. So each person can go recognize things and then go from that point. That's all that, that's all that 
matters is just to say it, it's got to be heard. That's why we share so much information. Okay. Got you. Cool. All right. So Amazing. before we get cut off, I know you want I want to, I want to, yeah, just to quickly transition into your amazing free gifts that you are offering Ooh. everybody. And I've been checking them out on your website okay. and my goodness that everybody is in for a huge treat. Could you explain yeah. those for us, Lisa? I did. Um, one of the things I do is a newsletter, which is a, a support system and bringing through higher consciousness, highest consciousness, everything. I don't do anything less. And so it, it's a newsletter based upon crystalline consciousness and everything galactic and, and new earth and all that stuff too, um, which is reality, not, not something one day it's now what we're living. So, so what I do is share what we, what we're going through and what this is and from the highest place that I can. Um, then, so when people sign up, then it'll take them and give that not automatically. Um, the other thing is uh, I have a recorded um, light encoded quantum light body, crystalline light body activation that I will be including for this too, which they will listen to. They can sleep to it. Doesn't matter. It's an activation of all of these different consciousnesses to start to activate on a cellular level um, for them. And it's easier. It goes straight to the core and it speaks to all the multidimensional aspects for you. And it awakens it, it, it within your human consciousness here. Um, then the third is the reprogram program, which is a starter package. It's a 33 day program teaching you how you can reprogram yourself, which is kind of cool. That's very and cool. It is. And, and that'll actually sign everybody up for the newsletter automatically. So one thing will do the other. Um, but that one's important because we don't believe we have any power for a while. And so this actually gets us into that place to start to take some of that power and, and to actually stay, take command of our reality and reprogram it to the things we want to experience here, which is cool. So it, it's a 33-day it's a program that, that basically teaches each person how to do this themselves, which is, which is powerful uh, alone. And then the last thing is um, my first book, Awakening to Remembering which is very simple. It's not meant to be, none of this is complicated unless we had, get our head in a way. So it's very, it simplifies the process of how we even came to this earth and separated off and how we separated off into time and aspects and how we went into forgetting these things and how we're returning to an existence. And so that's in PDF form, which introduces the simplicity of, of how all this came to be. And then the other books later that people want to get into go into more depth of the processes from my own experiences and remembering here. So wow. that's the four things that I've included today for everybody who wants to get it. That is incredible. Lisa, thank you so much. Um, I know I'm going to be very busy for the next <laughs> few weeks. Good. Yeah. I can't wait to get stuck into all of that myself. Um, for everybody. One thing I want to say. This is okay. not an intellectual process. This is an absorption process. You want to just flood your consciousness. You want to absorb it through your being. You don't want to try to remember every word. You don't want to try to remember anything because that will actually interfere. It can't with your process because you're trying to understand it all. Just let all that go. Just be in it. This is, the activations are a being process. And, and so I just want to say that because a lot of people are like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Your head doesn't understand, but the rest of you is what's important. The rest of you does. Okay. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you. So everybody go and grab Lisa's free gift. So it's on the email that I'm sending to you all the same email that you've had to open and click on to, to watch this interview. So just click on that link and it's going to take you through the whole process. Um, it's been absolutely mind bending, mind blowing. It's been, it's been so sort of indulgent as well on a very human level. You We've know, got to stretch yeah. that mind. Got to stretch that mind. Got to open the heart. Well, I, I think you, you've definitely done a, a good job in doing that today good. for us, Lisa. And I just want to say thank you so much because you are so generous with everything that you share. Every interview I've ever heard, there's just this knowledge. And I know you won't see it from that point of view, but from no, my I'm point of view and many other people's, what it's just, it's such a gift to have you. 
That's how we break our abundance issues is to become generous. And most don't understand that. The more generous we are, the more we share, the more we live in unity consciousness, the more we create for everybody here. And, and so that generosity is a part of who we are. And, and we are supposed to be that way. Everybody's got to do this. That's how we create. That's how we bring and anchor all of the new here. So it's true. Thank you. Well, it's, it's been amazing to off. receive, you know, all of this today. Thank you, Lisa. It's thank you, sweetheart. Um, Keep going because this is awesome. I'm excited for this with you. Thank you. Me, me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. Bless you. And thank you thank so you. much to everybody for watching. I think you'll agree. It's been uh, it, it, it's been an experience, right? <laughs> Lots to digest, I'm sure. Um, please do reach out to me. You know, hit reply on email. Tell me what your favourite bit was of the interview. Go and grab Lisa's free gifts. They're gonna you carry on. You'll carry on with the journey of mind expansion. Yeah. And um, yeah, just just please keep on tuning in as well and watching the summit as it unfolds you know i've got more amazing speakers and experts and everybody's a bit different you know which is great right because it it adds so much flavor to this summit so thank you so much for watching lisa thank you again for an incredible interview thank you and, sweetheart uh, um, thank you everybody you. and we will uh, see everybody tomorrow <laughs>